And now we're ready for another historic moment. The first time that a song has come from the Martian surface. And again, this song is for you guys. It's all about you guys today and being inspired and motivated to lead that charge to be those explorers. So the next person I want to bring up to the stage needs no introduction, but I'll give him one anyway. His name is Will I Am. He's a singer, songwriter, and he's one of the most creative people that I know. But also, he is so passionate about making sure that our kids have an opportunity, all kids have an opportunity to live their dreams, whether they want to be astronauts or artists or musicians or ball players or whatever you want to do. He's inspired to ensure that you guys are inspired. So without further ado, would you please come up to the stage? Will I am. Give it up for Will I am. Everybody, this is, um, you know, I can't even, there's no words to explain how amazing this is. Um, these kids here are from Boyle Heights, the same neighborhood I'm from. And this time last year, I did a program on ABC called <clears throat> I Am First. Mm -hmm. And um, it was to inspire kids to take an interest in STEM. And just, just to say, hey kids, you should want to become scientists. I'm going to put this program in Roosevelt. Doesn't mean that kids are going to want to join that program. So I thought of making a television program to inspire kids on how cool science is to show that my world appreciates the scientists and the engineers that give us the tools to express ourselves and you know, entertain the world. Without scientists, we wouldn't have these tools. There would be no music if it wasn't for people like Nikola Tesla. Right. There wouldn't be radio, I'm sorry, if it wasn't for people like Nikola Tesla. There wouldn't be record players and uh, CDs if it wasn't for all the engineers that you know, championed that technology and passionate about connectivity. And, um, so I appreciate them to the point where I used my own money to make that TV program to inspire kids in my neighborhood. That, that movie, Waiting for Superman, was about our neighborhood. And it doesn't have to be that way. Roosevelt changes when you guys become Mark Zuckerberg's, Dave Lavery's, you know, Jack Dorsey's. And it's not impossible. That's right. You know, it's only impossible if no one brings those tools to you guys. So now, you know, he got a champion in me to bring the tools to you guys to become the next. Not, not, not just you, but everyone in this room, we are here for you guys. Yes. Because it takes a community, it takes a village to raise a child. And I know I had a lot of hands in my development. You know, a lot of yeah. people were developing me. What got you inspired? Um, really my mom, you know, she, she sent me to Brentwood Science Magnet. So early on, I, I got, you know, I don't know what gave her the idea to send me an hour away out of our neighborhood, but that was brave of her to think of sending me an hour away from home. I was seven years old going to a Brentwood, Brentwood Science Magnet School, and I attended schools outside of my area for 12 years of my life. And um, my teachers, Mr. Wright, Ms. Montez, mm -hmm. they, they encouraged me. So that encouragement goes a long way. Yeah, my encouragement was my mother gave me a chemistry set, and I mixed these two chemicals together, and I created the most fantastic explosion. I mean, fantastic, huge, orange smoke, flames, all that. And then I had a hand in my development. I wanted a, I, 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 I wanted a chemistry set. I remember I told my mom, I was like, I want a chemistry set for Christmas. And then my uncle, Roger, was going to give me a chemistry You remember, Ma? She, I wanted a chemistry set, and uh, I, I didn't get one, though. It's but. not too late, though. No, so I, I wanted a chemistry set, and then I wanted a piano. I was like, Mom, when am I going to get my piano for Christmas? I never got it, though, but, <laughs> but it, was that, it was that, you know, the drive of wanting something you couldn't have that, that keeps you going, right? You, you, you kids in Boyle Heights and outside, you know, communities like Boyle Heights, you want something that you can't have. But doesn't mean you won't be able to get it if you just stay focused and surround yourself with people that have that same drive to change, you know, your lives. A lot of times, you know, far too many people want to escape the neighborhood to the point where the neighborhood stays a ghetto. 
everyone wants to get out of it. Man, I can't wait to get up right. out of this ghetto. Right. But that's the reason why I want to go back to Boyle Heights so that you guys don't ever think about leaving it but changing it. Like we have to change communities like Boyle Heights, and you're going to change it via STEM and STEAM. And if you think about music and math, those are two true absolutes that use both the right and left side of your brain. So if you know music, you know math. And if you know math, you know music. And if those two things are in you, you can do anything. Your creativity, your innovation, your curiosity. I mean, that's what we have, these scientists and engineers, like Adam right here, who helped develop the EDL mission to get this Mars Curiosity rover on the ground. So that curiosity, he's going to tell you a little story later on about what it took to keep him in school and the things that he had to do to keep going. So never give up. People told me that I can be an astronaut. I said, why? Why can't I be an astronaut? Well, because you weren't in the military. Well, because you weren't this or weren't that. It's not, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the drive inside of you. Whatever you want to be, whatever you dream, you can do if you put your mind to it, right? That's right. Is that, is that right, students? Yeah. Oh, come on, that's weak. Come on now, give me a little more. Is that right? Yeah. That's more like it. That's more like it. Yep. I mean, I'm a little nervous because mom's in the audience. Is your mom in the audience? Yes, she is. Hey, mom. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, guess what? It's about that time. Yes, it is. We have something. Uh, this is the first time that a song has ever come from a, another planet. And I think we have, I think there's a guy with a mohawk. Hey, you know how famous that guy is? I know, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all right. We got, uh, we got Mr. Bobick there. And uh, we thank you for everything you've done to help uh, inspire and motivate. Uh, one of my friends was at the, uh, at the school bus the other day. And there was a little kid had a mohawk and a star on the side of his head. And I wonder where he got that from. It was you, man. So you've inspired and motivated kids just by, just by being there. So uh, let's hear this song. Yes, let's do that. I've, I've been waiting, uh, you know, for a year now. Yeah. Yeah. I've been uh, keeping this under my belt and not telling anybody. What well, kind of under your belt? Kind of. <laughs> but it, it was so hard to, like, not want to, you know, just blurred out the first couple of months but right. now it's it finally is uh, a reality and it's and it's coming just any second now here we go so. roll the song here we go Don't mess around. 
For, give it up for Will I Am. Come on out here. Whenever I hear that, I get so inspired. And uh, what what was it about this song that you know when you saw the launch? What was it that just made you want to use the orchestral pieces and the French horns and those kind of things that, to make this song? Well, the, the first thing is when 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 I was here last year, and they said it was a possibility of having the song broadcasted back from Mars. The first thing that hit my head was, I didn't want to do a song that was done on a computer. Right. I wanted to show human collaboration and have an orchestra there and something that would be timeless where it's, you know, and translated in different cultures, not have like a hip hop beat or mm -hmm. a dance beat. You know, a lot of, a lot of times, you think that people in my field aren't tr aren't supposed to try to execute something classical or or, or orchestral, so I wanted to break that right. you know uh, stigma and do my interpretation of an or of an or orchestral piece. So, you know, there was a forty piece uh, orchestra there, and uh, a friend of mine um, uh, helped me. It was it was it was so beautiful to see. Um, you know, all the, the people from the orchestra there reading the sheet music, and it was in record plant in Hollywood, and, you know, to see a big orchestra translate something that was in my head was just, was so, was so beautiful. Right, yeah. right. So, do you have any students in here that have any questions? I think this young lady right here has a question, don't you? You don't have a question? Oh, come on. Anyone have a question for Will about the making of the song? Behind, Behind me. Okay, here you go. What? Say, say what your name is. My Christina. name is Christina Cervantes, and I just wanted to ask you, like, what inspired you to, like, do all this and, like, show off what you're doing? Good question. Really, it was um, my neighborhood and people in my neighborhood encouraging me. That's where it started, really, was um, people in Boyle Heights, East L.A., saying, hey, Willie, I heard you rapped. Dance for us. Show, show us your new dance moves. And then from there, it went... You know, it just grew, but just being acknowledged and encouraged goes a long way. So that that really was the the you know the birth of, you know, my passion was just being encouraged by family and friends, um, and then no boundaries. You know, once you're encouraged, you don't see boundaries. Right. You know, so that, that's pretty much it. So that's why I wanted. Try my hardest to encourage you guys to go beyond what they tell you you're supposed to do in Boyle Heights or what you can do in Boyle Heights. I have another question, Will. Um, Cynthia Arenas. Uh, my question is, what, what would you have said if the NASA would have told you not to make the song? What would have been your reaction to it? Oh, if, um, if NASA said we can't beam it back from Mars? I would have still been blessed that I came to JPL and hung out with 
scientists and people like Leland, you know, not, not, not every idea, if it's a good idea, doesn't mean it's not going to happen the, the time that you told them. If you're persistent, at one point in time, it would, it, it would have happened. You know, I've been told no a trillion times, but that doesn't stop you. So if, 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 if you know, the day that I came here and I presented the idea to the people to, at NASA and they, and they said, no, it was not possible, I still would have went to my community and around the world and said, hey, I was chilling at NASA and I pitched an idea that they didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I still came to NASA. When I see the footprints on the moon, why do they say the sky is the limit? When I see the footprints on the moon.